So bring it on. Like they all, that idea that just because I don't do CrossFit, let's start the podcast with this. Are we filming? We are filming. Three, two, one, let's talk about this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I'm a hundred. What have I done? No, 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 because no, 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 no. Like, I make fun of myself for not liking conditioning, that's true. But I did run a 5K in 2021. So I know I can go under 20 minutes if I train for it, right? It was uphill, basically most of it, with probably a 500 meter downhill, back to uphill the entire time, because it was going like this and then down, and then uphill and down like that. So it was three rounds, each, each was one mile-ish. So it was three turn like this, right? Most of it uphill, I was doing it in my Vibrams. So that means on the way down, I could not run. That's where people would pass me is on the way down because with Vibrams, you have no hill, so I had yeah. to slow down. I bet you, you let me train four weeks for it, I bet you I go under 20 minutes on the 5K. So I want all those skinny bitches out there that <laughs> I think I can't, bring it on, Let, let's do this. Because now I'm starting to get pissed. By the way, I have a 5K row at 18 minute flat. Just so people know. So when you want you start trash talking about conditioning like some are doing, bring it on. I'm just saying. <laughs> Part of the whole goal setting for me when I said, like, we're going to do a powerlifting meter, uh, Olympic lifting meter, I was like, well, I don't want to get slow, which meant I had to sign up for a 5K run. <laughs> and now, not only do I have to run a 5K as fast as I can, but she I have to beat, beat him. She better be under 20, because otherwise I'll never let it go. <laughs> and I have to ride my bike the 45 minutes to and from the race. That's warming up. I need an Uber, maybe, that <laughs> day, guys. Train. Um, <laughs> we can take the bicycle on the train, by the way, so we can cheat. But yeah, this is Holland. Yeah, if we're gonna do it. So <laughs> now I'm so close to training for it because I'm like, yeah. Anyway. If I win. Oh, if I beat you. If I beat you, you have to wear my pink shorts on the podcast. No, we're gonna have to put the, that banner back when is up here. The 5K? <laughs> when is the five k? June. Hmm. I'm. We'll talk about this by the next podcast. We might have an announcement. We might have an announcement <laughs> coming. I mean, I do want to do the podcast in the pink shorts anyway. So, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Let Let me think about this. Anyway, so let's start the podcast with this morning, right? So yesterday, so people last week. Yeah, last week <laughs> episode was shot yesterday, and you did find your lumbar erectors, and you were. I was on S fire. Sparkly all day. Yes, I was sparkly. Today, this morning, I woke up like ready to have good sessions, normal breakfast with some carbs, went over, did some bodybuilding, upper body stuff. And I was like, by the time I left, I was five foot nine Dana Lynn Bailey, like <laughs> yoked, so excited. She was round. Yeah. <laughs> she walked in, I was like, you're very round today in a good way. Yeah. Uh, he said that to me today too, and I did. We I took, both I took immediately go. I, I took it like a little, I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? I told Tyler, like, you look round because his lats are growing and he's like, around here, like almost hurt, like my stomach. It's like I've been trying oh my God, really I have, hard. I have yeah. two wives now, <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> But it, it couldn't have been long, maybe like 30 minutes, and it was just soup, like a huge crash. All I wanted was fats, a nap, some protein. <laughs> no, but don't crash. You went through the healing phase. Yeah, like well, I just- you're like, I'm good, I'm very happy, it was, an, it was awesome, and now I need to lay down right. and heal. Just don't make me do anything. Exactly, protein and sodium, you crave protein saturated fats. So first time I get to that stage. So what happened is, because we talk about emotional mapping, um, she did an assessment with Richard, back in Dubai, she talked about where she saw red. So she first time she had a true sympathetic response, maybe ever, mm -hmm. right? And so how do I deal with it? How do I deal with it? She absorbed it. And basically that showed in the training yesterday where finally she was doing post squats wide, so all lumbar rectors, all glute mid, where she connected to that sympathetic state. And the most important part was to show her that a sympathetic state is not bad. She was convinced that going sympathetic means stress, means something she hated. I was Previously, like, like, yeah. like yeah, yeah, conditioning-wise yeah. over the course of Anything. however many times. No, no, she thought in life, in general. Yeah, yeah, in if general, she went like sympathetic, yeah, like it, it would be bad. Yeah. It's a bad thing, yeah. Yeah. like so, more, so many people do. I was confused with the expression of it, that it yes. was going to, if you have to go into that, that it looks like what Julian looks like when he's carrying a yoke or pulling a sled. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize that for each person it's gonna look different, Yeah, and the expression will be, and, it, and it's not always like complete insanity. Yeah, you know? like. Yeah. But I like being there. That's that's what I was trying to explain to her. I'd say, you see my face because I'm going fucking insane, but I love the feeling. That's yeah. my favorite feeling. Yeah. I, I, I hunt this down as much as I can. I get it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly. That's where the dopamine all that shit is being released. When you can get a true sympathetic, but not, again, people think sympathetic means stress. But your response to stress is incorrect. So it's not stress, it's you. When you have stress, you have two ways. You can go into flight, which is I don't want any, and then you, whatever you want to call it, cow, cow, uh, cower. cower away from it. Or you can go, I'm going to kill, don't make fun of me, I'm going to make you speak <laughs> French. The, oh, oh, oh. Um, or basically, you can go, let me kill this bitch. And winning does not feel bad. Like everybody thinks, for example, going into a fight is a bad thing. Yeah, unless you win. As long as you win, yeah. it's all right. No, but like the guy comes for me in the fight, I'd be like, bring it on, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come, come, come. <coughs> Sorry. Like, I would not feel bad about it because you, unless you're good, you have a very, you have a, the chance of a snowball in hell to beat me. So I wouldn't be stressed. I'm like, it's your funeral, man. Bring it on. Mm-hmm. I'll just destroy you. I'm not going to be stressed about it. Like for a second, he'll be there and then I'll be like, yeah, I told you. So, but people have that, have that anchored belief that sympathetic means stress, means anxiety, means feeling bad, you know, like when you're not ready for mm-hmm. a situation and then you feel sick inside and that's what they think a sympathetic reaction. No, 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 that's a flight mode. That's basically yeah. when it's too much for you. But you can also have a sympathetic reaction, which you got through, that's where the emotional mapping comes in. We got the glutamine and then the lumbar erectors to fire and she was high as shit mm-hmm. for all day training so she she trained a massive amount right yeah. of volume Seven yesterday miles yeah. of biking in between after all yeah. Of that, yeah. <laughs> and then there was a crossfit uh, in the middle and all that stuff and then she was like you know so happy but i got two hours of deep sleep trained this morning around everywhere that's a full sympathy that's a correct sympathetic uh state that she responded to correctly mm-hmm. and so super addictive and then after that now that she's coming down, here comes the parasympathetic, and now it means it's just heal. Right? Yeah. That's what you do, by the way, even when you cut yourself. When you first cut yourself, you get a sympathetic response first. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that. <laughs> and it also, because all your body has to check to make sure that nothing entered the bloodstream. Bacteria, dirt, germs, whatever. Everything converges there to attack whatever foreign entity might be. And once everything is clear, then you start the parasympathetic, which is a healing phase. Now you start to close the wound. Mm-hmm. So it's always sympathetic, then parasympathetic. Same thing with food. Uh, any food has to be checked. So you go sympathetic, and then if the food is okay, you go parasympathetic to digest it if digestion is required. Okay. So that's what basically she got. But that's the first time I got finally the signals right. Yeah, it was another perfect example for me of like, if you do this, whatever movement you're doing with integrity and intensity, like you can't do anymore. Like yeah. If I even if I wanted to run right now, it would be pointless mm-hmm. because I just don't have that level of energy. And what is it, so the session you talked about today is bodybuilding session, essentially mm-hmm. kind of just pump work, if you will. Yeah. And what was your mood like during that session? I felt really good. You were just yeah, like yeah. happy in my skin feeling connection to movement, which is like, this is new for me, so. Yeah, feeling good is new for yeah. her. So, yeah. <laughs> Not hating <laughs> Not myself. hating yourself while training is she was like. Going to fail, like actual failure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was one of the best trainings, bodybuilding was, was the best training session ever. I could tell because she was around everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's when you hit, you know, like. And so also it means what blood flow, that's parasympathetic. So she achieved that arch finally from sympathetic. She went parasympathetic. Right, that's the flow state because you got uh, yeah. vasodilatation, blood flow, that's parasympathetic. She triggered a parasympathetic state, so now she can heal f- for yesterday. So that shows you also that recovery, active recovery the next day using bodybuilding is the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. You blast yourself, get the blood flow through bodybuilding the next day because that brings the parasympathetic, the healing process so that you can train hard again. If you were to go do CrossFit today, it'd be, it wouldn't be useless, it'd be detrimental. And she'd be confusing the signals right now because the body would think like we never get to heal. Yeah, yeah and you would feel, so I suppose the, the long-term way that you would then condition to that state is gonna be, oh, I did that and now I felt like shit for two days. Mm-hmm. But I'm still, still pushing, but the problem with that is that means you're telling your system there's no healing. Mm-hmm. If there's no healing, the system won't let you reach intensity anymore because you can't heal from it. So yeah. therefore, I'm not gonna let you go there. So you keep pounding like that, there won't be another session where our lower back leads up like it did where she feels so high. So now she lost something. She's going to be pissed about it. Go back to hating yourself because I'm like, but I love that training session. What happened? Well, what happened is you didn't recover from it. So your body won't let you get it again. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a savings account. You, you can only draw so many times from it. You have to deposit the money first. 
So that's how this works, right? But that's a perfect example of emotional mapping. But make no, make no mistake, this started with the assessment with Richard. Yeah. Absolutely. When he finally, she finally released and she saw red. That anger release, she didn't know what to do with it and he took a week and then suddenly in training, he connected. But there was a week in between the two. And for a week, she was like, I don't know what the fuck happened in Dubai, but uh, that was weird. I'm like, yeah, 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 don't worry. She's like, yeah, but I don't understand. I'm like, it's all good. Just you, you have to absorb it. It will come. Mm -hmm. It will come. What's interesting, too, is this This is, seems like it is, uh, I mean, it, I don't like using the word conditioning, like Pavlov's dog, if you will, exactly but, it, but it is exactly what it is. But it really mirrors the time frame that it takes to learn within training anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, like trying to learn, uh, like something like this, your response from day one to day two to day three, and the amount of trial and error in that time, you're looking at weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Yeah. You're not learning shit today. Yeah. Like people have to understand, like especially with feelings based, right? You feel something, it'll take you days if not weeks to process how you felt. You're not gonna understand it today. Yeah. I can make you access certain things, emotional mapping, you'll have no clue what happened. Like literally you'll be like, and then for four days, just, yeah, you just you're like, why am I so weird, right? Yeah, now? like yeah. even people will go like, you look different. Uh, what, what you? It's like when you rearrange your uh, kitchen or yeah. something, and yeah. you you still grab for something that you know isn't there yeah. anymore. Like it takes time <laughs> to remember what you're doing and mm -hmm. that this is new. And, and it's a new reality. Yeah. You have to flow within. Uh, yeah, yeah. It takes, but it's not a day thing. Yeah. Like people think they're gonna have new assessment and then they're gonna see the light. Yes, you will. And then it takes you a week just to process what the light was and then probably a year to understand how to do it at will, yeah. if not longer than that. So one of the things we wanted to talk about today was was that, that, le that learning. But yeah. like, like we do within training, like we said, there's, there's so much time. It's, such a, it's, a, it's a long, really long duration of time. That curve is gonna move move pretty slow. Yeah. And so one of the things that, that you've been doing to kind of be able to learn faster. maybe maybe not in a vacuum but at a faster. But, it, but faster. Yeah. Integrate. Yep. And, yeah, and, and maybe faster. with a little lower stakes, right? Mm -hmm. Like like man, if you if you're fucking up in training over and you feel wrong, you do something wrong and you do that for weeks and weeks and mistakes are costly in training. Yep. Um, so it's nice to find something outside of training where you can train that competitive edge, just learning, learning a skill all of this stuff where failure is expected in the beginning. Yeah, my, my problem was that um, I know exactly how, I have a very hard time learning to, so learning to learn is the key, mm -hmm. right? There are ways to learn faster, to integrate knowledge faster. When it comes to training, I have a major problem with that because I found that I can just muscle my way through things or talent my way through things, right? Yeah. I'll be, I'm good at, my nervous system is, has always been fairly good, let's put it this way, in the sense of fairly, I'm very attuned to it, and I've been always being able to play with it and manipulate it the way I wanted. That's probably why I was such a, a good athlete growing up, right? And that, I mean, you can tell that's what I do. So I get to training and I've learned that I can muscle my way or just great athlete my way out of everything. So that does not let me learn the way I should. I can hide behind my talent and my strength. Especially that's, in training. I think that's pretty common too. And yeah. I think amongst, athletes, amongst yeah. people that are good at what we call like an open loop sports, yep. you're really anything outside of just competitive exercising yeah, exactly. or, or, or lifting weights is is that your job is to adapt and improvise physically. Yeah. And so we talk about, you know, training with intent versus outcome and that type of stuff. The outcome is very often the goal in a sport like basketball, football, all those and things you, where it's like, I gotta get that. from here yep. to that guy. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and there's a guy in the way and he might do something unexpected and my technique, I can hone it, but my ability to make that happen consistently is in how I adapt when shit flies everywhere. Yep. And you're in a position yep. you don't wanna be in and you still have to make it work and that's how plays get made. That's how yep. all of that stuff, all of that stuff works. Um, but I, you know what happens too is I lost my, because of that, I lost my integrity. Training, mm -hmm. learning, not training, but learning. Uh, so I know how to train, like why so I never get pissed if I can't do a 220 sandbag. I'm like, it's okay, give me three months. It's like the 5K, it's like, it's okay, give me yeah. two months. I'll, you know, it, we'll see who's the bitch at the end. Um, <laughs> It is, it, 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 is, it is easy too to get a little bit lazy and kind of rest back on your heels when you do know 
If I had to do it right now, I could. Well, and when you walk into a room uh, when you're competing and no one knows anything about you, they don't know that you're the best guy in the room. Yeah. Uh, in your brain, you're thinking, like, I should be able to run every table, but it, they know nothing except for what you do. Yeah. yeah. So if you shit the bed three or four games in a row, that's the athlete that they know, not yeah. the guy who's yeah. making every ball or yeah. making every lift. Yeah, so there's, there's a proof out there, but my, my biggest problem me was, I think we talked about in, in the last podcast, integrity. That's why, I, I, in a way, I had lost, not my integrity to training, but I meant integrity to learning. Mm -hmm. So I decided to fix it. How did I do that? I went to play pool. That's how I fixed it. So I went and, to and a you, tournament. You have you had played pool in the past? 20 years ago. So I okay. the last time I played pool, uh, at a good level, I was 24, 25. Okay. This is when I had decided to actually be serious about it, to go towards my pro and do stuff. And I lost my fucking mind on the pool table. Like, that was probably the thing that made me the most passionate overall was playing pool. And, but to a degree where I couldn't handle it anymore. Like I was, I would, the, the bouts of anger and, I just, I, it's funny, but like, uh, oh, it got to me so many times. So I could live, without playing pool, but I couldn't live without training at the time. So I decided to go toward training instead. Like I had the certain things I wanted to accomplish, MMA, strength-wise, everything that were more important than accomplishing it in a pool tournament, even though I loved the game so much. Mm -hmm. There was a, an urgency there that was more toward training, which I'm very glad I did. Yeah. Uh, but 20 years later, we, so last June, we moved to Utrecht here. And, uh, and then there's a very nice, uh, pool hall that was like five minutes from home and I was like really by the way it's super pretty I had no idea that that was that pool halls that look like that were even a thing yeah I'm from it's South nice. Dakota yeah. so so when I when I hear the term pool hall what I think of is a bar that has a pool table yeah that's the closest so, yeah. so, so when we went with you I think I think with Melanie to film a few things while you were practicing that one day I went in and I was like this is like a fucking cathedral. Yeah, it's either an old church or an old train station. Cool yeah, and then the ceilings are super high and ornate and like quite maybe not hundred feet, but there must be 60, 70 feet yeah, ceiling. It's, crazy. it's either an old train station or an old church. Yeah. I'm guessing train station. And it was it was so pretty to the point where yeah. I like really want to just walk around and take pictures. Yeah. But it's also a place where I think they do take their pool pretty seriously. Yeah. Well, you can walk around and, and take pictures. But so I saw that. Well, no one's I was probably like, going to yeah. say anything to me either way. But <laughs> <laughs> I had decided to uh, to start playing again, but just like I needed a hobby. I needed something outside of training. I was like, dude, you have to stop mm -hmm. just doing this. Like mentally, this isn't good. So I, it was either jiu jitsu or pool. Yeah. Right? Jiu jitsu was another physical stuff. I was like, I need something where I need to use my brain. Mm -hmm. More like skill, like pure skill, but I can't muscle my way out. So I decided to start playing pool again. And then within two, three months, he was coming back. I was having fun. So before we go further, yeah. I want to know how, describe to me the, f the first day that you go to that pool hall to decide to start playing again. I, uh, Do you still have a cue? No, I didn't have, so I had to buy one. Uh, but that was kind of fun because it was me investing yeah. into my hobby, yeah. so that was kind of it was nice. Like, oh, getting after yeah. it. Here like, we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, oh, um, progress is coming and stuff like that. I'm playing, and it's not at the, I'm st uh, not at the level when I stopped, obviously. But it was still just as enjoyable. Yeah, and you were comfortable walking in and all those things. It was. Yeah, because yeah. I, you know, like at I've the time never I seen a room that Julian walks into where he doesn't think, like, automatically own it. You know? <laughs> so I can just imagine him walking in like. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to beat all of you in a few I do weeks. think between you and I, the last time I were there, the rest of the pool hall was a little afraid of what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> so so they they, they yeah. left us alone. But. No, no, so I'm always, yeah, I'm usually comfortable wherever <laughs> I go. So I, uh, but it was cool because wa I was like, man, I enjoy playing. But it, now that I'm older and I have more urgency toward life, in general, I was like, why don't I do something with this? Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoy it a lot. And I, not to become competitive, that is not why I started it for. I was like, why don't you do something for the sheer enjoyment of it? Mm -hmm. Right, don't do what you did with Jiu Jitsu and all that stuff. Don't, just, how about you enjoy something? And so I started playing and then I, I got better and then the guys were asking me to, to play against them and that was fun. And it was like, hey, we have a league play. And so back to my, it's always, no matter what I do is that. So uh, back to league play, but then I start to play and I'm making progress. And then before you know it, I meet Alex Lilly, who's a world champion, and he lives in Utrecht. 
He was a world champion, so he was a very, very famous Dutch player, a uh, great, great player. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, lessons. I'm like, oh, I can do lessons with you. I was like, hey. And so, of course, <laughs> and back to tournament. And so now, so I decided to start to compete, not in the league stuff, but in a real tournament. Mm -hmm. So two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we went to a place named Plan B in Amsterdam, where they have actually some really good players. I, so I start to play, and then I'm up 3-1 on the first guy with a nine ball I just have to make fairly easy, and it's 4-1, and thank you. And I miss it. And I'm like, hmm. <clears throat> okay, I ended up winning 4-3. Like, so you didn't bow Jackson. No, right? no, okay. but at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> what just happened? Don't worry about it. Okay, get to the second uh, game, 3-0, and then there's an 8, easy. I go to the 9-4-0, buy. I lose that game, guy gets lucky, I end up losing the game 4-3. And I got flustered, like really flustered inside, because I was like, I choked. As I a, don't choke. As a person who's pretty competitive, that's a feeling where you just feel it all fucking slipping away. But well, I don't and choke. As the, as the other half, you can feel the air getting thicker in the yeah. room. Like this. I this don't choke. So I'm like, <laughs> what was that? I choked that day, I can tell you that. But yeah. I don't choke. So I'm like, wait. <coughs> that's, I don't do that. Like I walk into a room, there's 100 people in front of me. I'll do the seminar for eight hours. I'll own a room whenever I walk in. There's, I don't get rattled. Well, guess what? I choked. Mm -hmm. So I was like, whoa, so I got super flustered. We went, double elimination, I left. I was like, nope, that's the lesson I've learned. I need to process this, right? So we go get some drinks, we go home, I process it and everything. I'm like, okay. So I, I can feel there's something there. Like um, I can tell that the way I'm practicing is incorrect. It's not applying to competition. Like I, so, it, and it, that, so there's an idea there to our learning that is starting to become obvious, right? Where if it was training, it'd be easy because I've been doing this for so long. I know movement. I know exactly what I'm supposed to feel. Like but I suddenly I'm playing pool and there's a, there's a blind spot there. I can tell. A lot of the stuff my coach Alex is telling me to do, I can't apply. Yeah, hey, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. And then every time I'm like, no, but that's exactly what he told me. And I was like, huh, that's weird. So there was a major, major blind spot in my practice, the way I practice, the way, if, I think it was more than that. It was the way I looked at the pool table. I was a blue belt. So uh, I was doing a lot of memorization by watching YouTube and, and learning the stuff, but not exploration. But I was just repeating the stuff. And that wasn't my game. It's not my game. <laughs> and, and so I was like, okay, so I need to figure this out. So I'm like, okay, so I can't do it when I practice. The more I practice with nothing on the line, the worse it gets. Because the more, I, now I figure out, the more my ego gets into it, and then I want to duplicate things, and I want to be that guy instead of being me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, so there's a simple way to fix this. I'm going to enter a major tournament, which was last Saturday, yep. with it was really good players. Spur of the moment, too. Like, yep. I'm well, literally, I found out. Yeah. I was like, so we're podcasting tomorrow? He's like, nope, going to Belgium. Because <laughs> I, I like, found right. that out <laughs> on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the perfect opportunity too because if it doesn't, if it's not for something, like if there isn't a carrot at the end of the mm -hmm. road, he's pretty good at being like, well, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you can kind of whatever your way through anything. Life. I'm the same Life. way with like anything that's not competitive. Yeah, life. Yeah. That's yeah, but I'm. Um, that's complacency, at least yeah. it is to me. The idea of having the next day against the pros, if you qualified for it, gave him a little bit more something to lose or to strive for. I wanted I to be nervous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted the shit to matter and see what's up. Because then you see the flaws. Yeah. And so, but in the past, what I've done is when I get nervous, I block it out, bury it, and use fight as my way out. Right? I bury nervousness, I'm not nervous, and I just fucking make it work through anger. Mm -hmm. You can't be sympathetic in pool, you lose everything. And plus, I, w I was like, that's not the point. You don't anger your way out of that one, you learn out of that one. This is why I'm so good at fight and so bad at flow, is because I would fight my way out of everything. Like, put the, you know, legions of hell in front of me, give me a knife, and I'll be like, <laughs> berserker mode, bring <coughs> it on, right? But. On a pool table, you don't get to do that one. Like, plus, it's not the point, is you don't learn that. I know how to fight my way out of everything. 
I've done it my entire life. I can build whatever the fuck I want. But that wasn't the point. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, 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 go out there. And so what I told myself is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to accept the full blunt of the nervousness. I'm not going to go at 60% and try to play my way. I was like, no, I'm going to accept 100% of the stress, of that anxiety. Why? Because if I accept 100%, I only have to do it two or three tournaments like that and then I'll learn. If I go 60%, Two years from now, I'm still at I'm still there. I'm still at 50% anxiousness and angering my way through and never fucking learning. And I can spend the next two years not making progress or barely any because I'm refusing to learn. Because I'm refusing that first hit of <gasps> right. So I was like, fuck it, I'll go in there. So I show up and yeah, I was right. I was nervous. I've mm -hmm. I've oh. never seen him act like that. Like it was kind of like he was waiting for something to jump out from the wall, like, because when is Because every <laughs> single second, I'm like, I'm like, no, no. And so what I did though, is I refuse to go either in freeze and go like, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care, whatever, I, I'll play like this, let me lose and let's go get drinks, let's go, let's go do something. So I refuse that, but I also refuse to get angry and I refuse not to enjoy the time there. So which means every single time it was my, my time to play, I tried to make every ball to the best of my ability. I did not play well, so I was quite bitter by the end of the day because I really did not play well because you have to understand, I had to clean my stick three or four times. My hands were so fucking sweaty. Like first of all, I'm trying to put the balls together and my hands are like this. You know, like you have the magic rack and you put yeah. the balls and I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this and I'm like, oh, so I'm nervous and, and then I refuse to let go of that. Though. I was like, yeah, bring it on. And so I'm like this, right? And I'm grabbing my stick and my cue stick it felt like horrible to grab because I had it, my hands were so it's like clammy. Dried grease on oh it. yeah, and yeah! And I was like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> and my hands, I'm like, ah, yeah, "I'm using baby powder." <laughs> yeah, I'm using <laughs> baby powder every three minutes because I'm like, "You." And then for me, with the autism stuff, like uh, texture is a killer. Yeah. So there's people everywhere, there's everyone watching, but it's again, I'm, I'm absorbing it, but the texture was killing me. I was like, I need to do something, like I still can feel it here. I'm like, eh, ah. um, <laughs> so baby, you know, baby powder, yeah. thank God I brought some. I'm using my towel every three seconds, but every shot uh, first. But by the way, the guy I just played, he comes in, he's warm. Me, I haven't played in two and a half hours. Because yeah, I had to wait for, and then so the first few shots, I'm like, but I also realize how my practice is not designed for playing under pressure. We, and guess what? That's when it matters. Mm -hmm. If you want to be good, that's when it matters, right? And yeah. so I was like, I've learned pool incorrectly, and that's why he screwed me last time. So I've full blown accepted the that hundred percent of nervousness, and I was like, fuck it, yeah, that's me. I did not hide anymore. So I told her I was not happy of the way I played, but I never went away. Yeah. I Wait, accepted the full blunt of it. Before he had started, what is your intention? Like, what are you hoping to get out of this? Learn through competition, but also don't make the same mistakes as last time, which is missing the eight and nine ball. Yeah. Oh, and so, oh. I, I mean, and by the end of yep. the tournament, he, that was, he was successful there. And yeah, you never I mean, chill. actually, like, because the, the other guy- At the guys very fought, least, you were yeah. like, if I'm, if I'm, I closed if, if some I'm games. in front of the door, mm -hmm. I'm walking through it. I, I'm, I'm closed some games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I fucked up on other stuff. But again, he showed me like all the stuff. So then I realized when I'm wrong in practice, mm -hmm. right? How, how the way I was practicing was not allowing me to learn. And that's the biggest um, takeaway from this weekend is how to learn. Accomplishment will come if you know how to learn. Otherwise, yeah. you will. You will do a mistake that I realize is the mistake I think all blue belts make, and I'm not talking jujitsu, ju just in life in general, which is um, you're training to to feel like you're a badass, right? You're trying, so that's why the quote we're gonna put is you're training to get a feeling that you should get from the accomplishments of yeah. your training. What do I mean by that? I see guys at the global gym all the time, and they're, you know, they're doing all those bodybuilding movements. That they, s that they see on muscle and fitness or that stuff, that they see the great do. But I'm like, yeah, but you want, you're training like this so you feel like a badass. So that, sorry, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you see yourself training like mm -hmm. Kai Green. Yeah, but the reason you like Kai Green is because he has big fucking muscles. Yeah. You don't, you're a skinny bitch. Yeah, right? so stop training like Kai Green or Kai Green. Get fucking muscles. And just get yeah, muscles. Exactly, yeah. but if you look, we all do this. 
we train to get the feeling of being a badass instead of training to get the accomplishment that turn you into a badass. Mm -hmm. And I think, by the way, that's very necessary because um, that's how I got Michael Mann, right? Was to make him feel like a badass so that he could become one. So Michael Mann eventually had a great, at a good level because I had to give him the confidence. So I think to gain confidence and to learn something, that memorization stage yeah. that we talk about all the time, we did a podcast about this, is necessary where you're like, let me look like that guy. Yeah. And that's very necessary. Well, that's a required phase. That's a required phase. That's but there's like, that moment. That yeah. sounds to me like like as a as a little kid, you see like little kids playing basketball in the mm-hmm. driveway, and they're like three, two, one. Oh, I'm co- Kobe Bryant. You know, like like, like yeah. that's the exactly. that, 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 is, that is almost the same thing. Yeah. But but yeah. that's the age in which you know a, a sport or an activity or anything like that that thing is kind of what belt. endears you yeah. to it for the rest yeah. of your life. Anyway. And you need that face. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You need that face. But you also, we're going back to integrity. This is where I lost integrity is during practice. Because at some point, when I was practicing pool, I watched way too much Efren Reyes YouTube videos, right? And I'm trying to do the shots like I think he would. First of all, he wouldn't do that shot this way because that's not the correct shot. And second of all, that's him. It's not me. That's not how I play. It's not my game. Mm-hmm. That's his game. And on top of it, I'm not doing it correctly anyway. Like my. My stroke was loose anyway. That's not what he's doing, because he's the greatest player of all time. He's not doing that. So, but by watching the, so now basically what I'm doing is I'm practicing watching myself play. So I'm practicing making shots, looking at, like, look at me, making that shot like I'm a friend Reyes, except there's nobody watching, because, um, anyway. So I'm watch, I'm me watching myself play, trying to be a friend Reyes. So you're still that kid? Oh, uh, totally, yeah. <laughs> totally was. But yeah. that was something really important. To- totally was. Because we, instead of thinking about the ball that you have to play, mm-hmm. he started thinking about the rest of the balls that were left on the table. Position of the cue ball. Well, the, yeah. You don't get to play those if you miss this one. Yeah. So it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> because you fucking missed the ball. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? The other guy is cleaning up, which is what happened at the tournament. But then I realized too that all the stuff that I could do normally, I couldn't do anymore because now that basically your nervous confidence is shot and everything, you start to go. And my stroke got so jerky and everything because I never had a good foundation to start with. Because you know what I never developed is a good stroke. Ever, I, whenever I'm on, it's great. Yeah, but guess what? You're super nervous, your hands are clammy, you're not on. Yeah. But can you still fucking do at a certain level this basic stuff you should be able to do? And I'm like, and my coach had told me that so many times. The certain stroke you had to have, don't put spin, just And now I get it. But that's not shiny now, is it? Mm-mm. There's nothing shiny in that. It's a fucking stun draw. It's right below center ball, and then you hit it like this, and 10 times in a row, and you make the shot, and there's nothing shiny there. But that's exploration. Yeah. That's being a proper belt. And finding my own game is the key. Yeah. So, so your your skill set or your skill base within what you trained, you know, in all that time, just while it's good enough to work when you're training, it, it, you didn't have much margin for error then when there's but he you wasn't know, some asshole walking behind you or you know what I mean? Exactly. Everyone's together, staring at you or it's fucking hotter than you'd want it to be in there. You know what I mean? All but, that. And stuff. by the way, the problem too is when I'm practicing, I'm, I'm, I might be lying to myself as to how good I was practicing. Mm-hmm. If I'm fucking in my own head, going like a friend this, a friend that. Oh, I missed the ball, but I got I got the positioning I wanted. Who gives a shit? You missed the ball. Yeah. It doesn't count. It yeah. does not count. <laughs> See, I lost that integrity when it comes to learning. Like I was not being honest with myself on the table. Mm-hmm. But the worst thing is, if you do, you can keep if you keep doing that, you'll never find your own game. So you'll never be a black belt. You'll be a good blue belt, and you'll never go past that. This is why most people quit as blue belts in life, regardless of uh, discipline, is because they can never find their own game. How far can you push something without finding your own game? Like that's what she, that's what Carla discovered. I think also it's important to see that like when, when we when you talk about finding your own game, that your quote unquote the, the memorization phase, right? That that yeah. doesn't have that base doesn't actually need to be massive as long as it accommodates what you're capable of, like like your strong yeah. suits and, and it's and it's within your game. Um, I, I still always relate it to the thing that I do in this relationship, which is I've picked up playing guitar over the last yep. few months, which I'd quit for four or five years before that. 
And and that's a thing where I see some of my favorite guitarists are not the most technically proficient because yeah. that's really boring. That's guy hitting yeah. the marks all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Um, so some of my favorites are guys that don't even play anything that hard, but they write it really well, yeah. and and it and it's powerful and it works. And it's them. It's their thing. It's, it's a part of them that's in exactly. it, and that's what makes it significant. Yeah. And and you see sometimes there's guys in, in almost any sport that they have a game, a style that's so unique that all of a sudden it can't be contended with yep. using the tools that people normally use to cope with something else, with somebody else, somebody else's skill set. But what people don't understand is what it takes to find that game. Mm -hmm. The balls it takes, the exploration it takes, the, yeah. the amount of minutia, but not, but the problem is if you try to mimic that game, you still it's not true. You're still lying <laughs> yeah. to yourself and to everybody on that one. It's not your game. There's yeah. value to that mental space too. Like I didn't realize how much anxiety or mm. like feeling upset about things was clouding that. So if my hobby is reading or I like to learn, I'm not retaining shit because I've got 10 things going on in my yeah. brain that I'd rather be thinking about other than what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so even to be able to learn at all, if you're filling up your mind with things that aren't right in front of you, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And, and that, that is, it's so easy to get off that path and not, and not even see it. And I think that has a lot to do with being present too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yep. it's no different yep. than, than in training or in, yep. in practicing pool or playing an in instrument. Whatever. It's like, you can't kind of do it or else you might as well just not. Be, you <laughs> know what I mean? Yep. There, and and there, there are days, I'll sit there to pick up practice in my head somewhere else. I'm like, what the fuck am I even doing? Because you're you going to stumble over the same mistake 20 times yeah. and just be mad. But if you would do that with your guitar, why wouldn't you do it with your training? You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the same thing. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Like the, you know, that's also losing your integrity. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, you can't pull quality work, you're just getting frustrated, you're losing your love of playing, okay, you put it down and you go like, okay, I'll come back tomorrow, yeah. I'll do twice next time, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll make up for it because right now is really not the day. Yeah. That's integrity because it's integrity toward yourself. Yeah. Right? It's not, well, my coach said, ding, 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 ding. yeah, but yeah. you sound like shit. Yeah, 30 minutes is 30 minutes of practice. Right. Yeah, right? but if you sound Doesn't like, sh you know, if you sound like shit, you're like, man, I don't have it. And then you With hate it, yeah. what's it going to be like next time? You exactly, and, but, and music, if, I mean, at first you don't sound good because you're, you're a newbie, but it doesn't matter. Like to you at that time, it sounds awesome. But the point is music has to sound good. Otherwise, it's not music. Mm -hmm. It's just noise. Right. So training should be the same. Yeah. If it's, be careful that your training doesn't turn into just noise. So that dude at the um, global gym trying to look like Kai Green, he's not making music. He's making noises. Right. So he's not building muscle. He's just really good are doing the same exercise and to make it look like Kyle Green. But guess what? Kyle Green has muscles and he has a co mind muscle connection and he can squeeze his peg and he can make it work. Well, are you, you ain't doing shit. Mm -hmm. And it's not working. That's why you still weigh 66 kilos. Yeah. You know I mean, dripping wet because that's not what is required. That's not how Kyle Green started, by the way. Yeah. He's not doing, he didn't start with that shit. He basically used heavy dumbbells and then he built his strength and his body and his, and his structure and all that stuff. Like, you, you have to know what it takes. So be very, very mindful of not training to get the feeling you should get out of your accomplishments. Yeah. And God knows I did that with Paul, right? So that weekend showed me, but that's why also I accepted being so nervous because I, I was like, oh, sorry. I was like, um, I need to know what's wrong. I knew. Something was wrong. Technical difficulties. Yeah, it was so definitely the I microphone. think we're all right. I knew something was wrong. Hello. There we go. Beautiful. I knew something was wrong because the um, my stroke, bunch of stuff lately, I don't play well, and now I get it. But so I've learned so much from this tournament, right? By the way, of course, I joined the one in May, but um, because now I'm like now I want to learn better. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why I started pool four after a while. Fine, that's not why I started pool. I started just to have fun. But then at some point, I'm, I'm going to be like, I'm going to use pool to learn the flow state, which I'm so good at avoiding by going into fights. So I was like, all right. So that's why I did this weekend. But he also showed me <sighs> the blind spots that I had with trying to look like another guy, basically not being my game. And how rough it is when it's your game, because you're never quite at the level you think you are. Yeah. Not when the ship, uh, chips are down. And so I was like, all right. But to get there, I had to accept the full blunt 
of that stress of, oh my God, these people, is this, is that, and God knows I was, I was super nervous. And he's doing it in a frame that still keeps the balance there. Like the whole intention of this is to have a hobby. Mm -hmm. And he's doing it competitively because that's where it's led him. But in the same sense, a weekend tournament also means a weekend trip with the family. Yeah. So it, yeah. There's, there's a nice balance to it that I think keeps him from yeah. tipping too far over. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen some guys losing well, their mind on the, at that tournament. Me, I'm like, it's within what I want to learn from pool. Yeah. And the thing that I want to make sure to emphasize is that I think for for anybody with training, like every like your training is always going to be this process of learning. It's going to be slow. You're also going to all of a sudden lose sight of things that you used to have a pretty good grasp yep. on. And you're always going to have to go back. Um, but the thing is, is I still believe that the stakes on that because of the physicality mm -hmm. are, are pretty high. Yeah. And if that is the only place that you're really practicing learning, um, I think it can be very hard sometimes to change the direction with that alone. And the thing that's been the most valuable for me with this has been that I can practice these things with very low stakes. You know what I mean? It's pretty mm -hmm. accepted that if I'm going to, my expectation is if I'm going to go and I'm going to try to learn something new, you know, on the guitar, it's going to take me a thousand mistakes before yeah. I make yes. it through one time and without making a mistake. And, and even then it's not yeah. good. Yeah. I shouldn't fuck up. And then you keep going and going and going. But that process is less, I think because of the lack of physicality, it's, it takes less out of you. There is. You make a mistake it's more lifting forgiving. weights. Yeah. Man, you yeah. can, at least if you're me, you're like, fuck, man. Like, you feel like a piece of shit. You're like, yeah, I knew I could do this. No, what but the plus, fuck? your shoulder hurts the next day. Yeah, your there's knee, this the stuff. Thing. You can't move. You can't play with a kid. You can't do this. Yeah. They, they, it's less forgiving in the weight room. Yeah. There's no question. Whereas, whereas here, there's much more, you're just learning the process. There's yeah, it's your ego who gets hurt, but yeah. not, yeah. There's seriously muddy water, too, in perfectionism. Yes. Like, I'm just trying to learn how to speak some words in French. I'm so afraid of saying something wrong or judgment yeah. or because I got into this habit of do shit you're good at and keep don't mess <laughs> up. And now when you, I try to learn something new, I'm like, oh, I'm going to sound like an idiot. Oh, or yeah. this is really uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable is really important. Yeah. Well, I felt the same way trying to learn German, too. Is it's, like, it's like even the few things that I do know, if I'll say it in, in, in public, we say no spread, well, yeah. well, then, like, like, you know, fucking Toby will be like, what'd you just say? Did yeah. you just? And I'm like, I'm never going to fucking say it if every yeah. time I try. Exactly. You're, you're, you're never yeah. going to learn how to speak <laughs> it if you never talk to exactly. speak. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that's the same thing here. But it, that's, again, integrity to our learning. Right? Yeah. Oh my God, it's so easy to lose. Yeah. It, it is such a blind spot. Like you, it's in training. It's so now it makes me question how I did like uh, assistance work or bodybuilding stuff. I'm like, am I trying to do the same thing? Mm -hmm. Am I trying to do the way Kai Grimm does it instead of working my bicep? Because I'm not working Kai Grimm's bicep. I'm trying to work yeah. that one, mine. And maybe he doesn't feel like his. Maybe that's not the way he feels anyway. Maybe I have no fucking clue how he feels because he's just doing a YouTube video. And how could I gauge what he's doing on a YouTube video anyway? And maybe because I'm not the guy. Yeah, his body is completely different than yours in the first place. Yeah, and he's been doing this for <laughs> fucking 20 plus yeah. years. And yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and suddenly you're like, whoops. <laughs> it's so easy to turn to our memorization. Yeah. When was, both of you guys, when was the point in your life as a whole in which you think you did the most, the most learning? And what was it? In high like, school. Yeah. And, and, and to me, it's kind of the same way, like like younger age of high school. And it didn't have anything to do with what I was learning in school. But it had a lot to do with I was learning, like, all these athletic, physical skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I just picked up an instrument. And then, you're, you know what I mean? But it's interesting that it wasn't that I was learning, one, learning the shit out of one thing. Mm -mm. It was at that point, the reason I was able to push all those things forward is that I was adept at learning and used to learning at that point. I think it relates to, uh, and I've always believed that, to be a better athlete or a better coach, you need to become a better human being, right? So to lift a 500, to have a 500 pound squat, you need to become the guy who squats 500. Mm -hmm. I believe that's true for everything. I need to become the guy who plays pull well, because that means that I have to find my own stroke. I have to slow it down. I have to not let myself make mistakes or not paying attention. So that's gonna change who I am. Mm -hmm. To become good at pull, and I will become good, it will change, I won't be the same Julian anymore. Just like having a strong fit change who I am. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Just like, you know, all that stuff. Like when me, what I learned the most, uh, I think is once I opened my gym. Mm -hmm. Because I knew nothing about money. I grew up like, yeah, you just ask for your grandparents. Uh, I had no respect for hard work in that sense, being talented and everything. And suddenly I'm opening a business and you have to pay the bills every month. And then I discovered that 2400 is not 2500 that the rent is 25, it's not 24. You don't get to go, whoops, sorry. No, Yeah. it's still 25, I don't get, you, know, you get the fuck out. Like, <laughs> or you get 10% and you go like, but when I asked my parents, they always said yes. How does that work? <laughs> yeah, and you know, like once you have to ask, you know, that client for the next 10 sessions, but he only had seven, but can you please pay the next 10 because I can't make the rent? Yeah. yeah. And you go like, fuck me, money is hard, man. Yeah, <laughs> all that stuff, that, that's because then I became a different person. Mm -hmm. I became a person who understood money and that changed who I was. Yeah. And I think that's the part you have to understand is like the person who will do, who will have the achievements you are looking for, that person is not you right yeah. now. You, you're gonna have to transform yourself into that person, into a better you. And to do that, you have to kill who you are right now. Or at least you're going to have to understand that your ego will need to get crushed because you won't grow out of staying who you are right now. So don't think you're going to acquire just skill on your snatch. That's going to allow you to get the 10 kilos. Nah, you're yeah. going to have to be a better you person. You have to be a part of that process. Yeah. And yeah. you as a person will have to be the person who snatches 10 more kilos. And that means you have to be smarter. You have to be better. You have to be a different person and a better one in order to snatch 10 more kilos. So there's many, many different things we need to do to become better person overall. But that 10 kilo on your snatch, it's part of that. Yeah. You're going to have to learn to do stuff you haven't done before. So you're going to ask, you, and by the way, that is not necessarily a comfortable process because you have to kill who you are now to, so that the next one can be born, mm -hmm. right? That is not a enjoyable process. That's what the pole tournament was for me. I was like, dude, accept the full blunt of it and see that you're not as good as you think you were. Yeah. Proof is, and then so on the table, I was like, shit, good. Uh, that's exactly what I thought. Yeah. yeah. And, and Kayla, you mentioned like in, in high school, that was kind of when you had covered, or done the most like wide variety of, of learning. I did what the most playing, yeah. yeah. So I played like four different instruments and did every extracurricular you could think of, and I played two sports at a time at a pretty competitive level. level. Um, but they all kind of, they had something that overlapped. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I learned in one sport I could use in the other, or what I learned on one instrument I could use while I sang. But where I started learning the most about myself was when I sold every, and uh, when I took the structure out of my life, yeah. got rid of all of it and was like, okay, who are you? Like there's nothing, you, have, you don't have your career anymore with the retirement to fall back on. You just sold your house. You own a dog and a car. Like, who, and nothing else. Yeah. who are you now? Yeah, no, I'm not attached to any of these things. Yeah. I don't get to define myself by my <laughs> exactly. things. Exactly. Where I am. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the memorization versus exploration, right? Yeah. Memorization is that's my parents, is this and is that. And then suddenly, is there a phone? Is there yours or mine? That's you. Oh, that's my daughter. Um, <laughs> memorization is that. Is that test negative? It's everything that, you know, was defined. Uh, for you. Exploration is where I'm at with pool right now. It's like, who am I on the pool table? What mm -hmm. is my stroke? And I don't get to use that one, that one. No, no, no. Not nobody else. It's not. I, I think I made the same mistake most people when they do Jiu-Jitsu think, which is I can use that technique or that technique or that technique, you know, because that world champion does yeah. that one and that do that. Oh, I've seen that one on YouTube. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can do this. Where Actually, nah, because none of those techniques is you doing them. Well, a lot of things when they talk about any 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 skill based technique is that like. Okay, you guys go for two okay. seconds. <laughs> With any, that uh, I'm about to throw my fucking phone <laughs> out of the window. <laughs> it's not going to last very long, and no, I'm going to kill I my daughter. I don't want to preemptively say that this isn't an emergency because it certainly could be. But I remember when you guys were in Dubai. She's calling me now. <laughs> when you guys were in Dubai, there was like 25 messages that said, hey. She's calling me. Huh? She's calling me now. 
Of course she is. Like, she <laughs> must be needing like money to go get donuts or some <laughs> shit like that. Have the, kids. It's the, awesome. The, so when you guys were in Dubai, I think I'm not joking. She had sent you. I didn't even know this. She's like. Oh, I'm just trying to get a hold of my dad. No, but it was a joke. So she went, hi, 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 hi. It was like 25. 60, no, 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 63 in a row. 63 I counted. 63 in a row. And so she shows me this. And I'm like, first off, he's doing a seminar right now. Yeah. So it wouldn't eh, matter eh, if the world eh, was on fire and he yeah. can't answer it. Two, he can't see 65 any better than he can see one. But I know he's going to be mad. Like, what no, are you doing? No, but I don't care about seeing them. I care about hearing them. Yes. Like right now, for example, <laughs> like it, eh, eh, like she sent me like 70 messages and four calls. I mean, I'm like, I'm not one of your friends. When, no. my, when my phone goes off like that, it means it means one thing and one thing only. You're gonna get wood. Yeah, someone is gonna get wood. Nope, nope. Yeah. It, 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 Nobody's died recently, like that involves me, so I don't get emergency calls that no. often. The only time my phone rings incessantly is the blood bank asking me to donate yep. blood. For really? some reason, mm -hmm. you donate blood once. Really? I don't know if they get addicted yeah. to that shit or what, but man, they will call you all the time. Yeah. You gotta, I never got that one. You got to get that good stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You need no, that American actually, blood. That, that, good, that good American <laughs> blood. With the tattoos, you're not allowed to. Exactly. I think within a year or so, six months or something yeah. like is it a year? I have oh, to get a I'm new doing tattoo. tattoos all the time, so I'm yeah. good. I'm saying <laughs> that's actually my favorite excuse when I, if I finally want to pick up the phone, I'm like, just got a new tattoo or just got back from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop calling. I'm doing a lot of drugs. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. It's yeah. not a good time. Yeah. <laughs> not a good time. It's been a weird week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that I'm not necessarily <laughs> proud of right now, yeah. but yeah. But before we, we've probably yeah. got, I don't know, about 10 minutes left, give or take. Yeah. But, but I want to emphasize to those, you know, this is generally, well, it's a fitness podcast-ish. But like, but, but for those of you that, that train, if, if training is the only place you're doing any learning, uh, or, or trying to work on a skill, or, a new or, skill. Or, or it learning, really matters to you and you really want to be good. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's important to, f to make sure you find something outside, something adjacent to that. To By learn. the way, yes, oh, let's talk about that, right? So you really want to be good at fitness. Maybe just having a, just an awesome six pack, you want some guns, you want a good naked, you want to compete or whatever. Like if you put that much pressure on yourself, chances are the gains are going to be harder to, to get because you're gonna be stressed out all the time, you're just gonna take into that, you were saying like the perfectionism mm -hmm. is probably your worst enemy. Yeah. Best is the enemy of good. Yeah. And that's always been that. So if you can have a hobby on the side just to take the pressure off. Yeah. Like the best athletes that I had, like someone like Valerie Robel, like she had one hour to train because she had a life on the side. She had to go pick up her kid. The reason she did so good at CrossFit because CrossFit was number four mm -hmm. on the list. Right, and, and so that allowed her to put everything she had in the training and then be done with it. And good day, bad day, fuck, tomorrow is another day. Yeah, and it didn't ruin the entire day because you had exactly. other things that were important Like, Because I've seen that too many times on that, yeah. those young kids that are basically working in the gym all day. You know, that's the basic, th their world is the gym. That mm -hmm. is destructive. You have to understand that it, it will screw you up because they, any mistake you make in the gym is a mistake in your entire world. And it, the, the repercussions of every mistake is blown out of proportion always. You want to talk about injury prevention all the time. People yeah. want to train like that all the time. So what happens when you get injured and you kick that leg out of the stool? Like, you still have to be a person. Yeah. And if you take your fitness out of that, who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. And are you going to be OK? Yeah. Like it, and, so, and, and shit how, happens. And and how, and how do you how do you what what ha are you supposed to just let all those tools get dull? Right. You know and what I mean. Like 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 least. all of a sudden you just you just stop done learning. No challenges. No nothing. I just no, sit, f first of you all, know? you're not a CrossFitter. You do CrossFit. Yeah. You, you you have to understand that. And second of all, to think you are a CrossFitter, that's who you are. Over time, will hinder your performance. Most people, I think, they do that thing. That's what I need to do to become good at CrossFit. No, on the contrary, this will be your downfall. Because eventually, it, the pressure will get to you. Even Katrin said it. Mm -hmm. Katrin, now she has a boyfriend finally, because for three years she had no dog, no boyfriend, living at the, the, her coach's house and everything. It gets to you. You can't be as good as you should be with that type of a life. Everybody has tried. No one can make it. Yeah. So, and you get injured, and now for three months, now what? By the way, if, you, if you're injured and then you hate yourself as a human being and everything, first of all, you're not going to heal as fast. When you come back, your training is going to suck. You're going to come back too fast and hurt yourself again. It will hinder your hinder your performance. Yeah. You can't make it like that. So instead of doing the silly assistance things to keep your shoulder from breaking, how about 
give yourself a little bit of a life outside of the gym. Mm -hmm. So if Need you that. do break or you decide you don't freaking like it anymore, that you can do something. Yeah. And then it can always be something that you come back to. And But like you said before, Julian, with trying to find your own game, that's what's important about it is you, you have to apply yourself to the sport. You, you exactly. aren't a CrossFitter. You are this person doing CrossFit, doing CrossFit and the, the moment you realize what you yeah. are and how that applies best to how you can do CrossFit or strongman or powerlifting, that's the, only that's the moment you've set this ideal trajectory yeah. for yourself, not somebody else's path where you're going to yep. get tripped up over your own shortcomings, uh, physical differences, genetic exactly. differences, Which will life not allow you yeah. to reach you know? your potential. Yeah. Like that's why we say don't teach to squat. Teach that person to squat. It works for you as well. Don't yeah. learn to squat. Learn to you squatting. Yeah. L that's what you need to learn is you squatting, not a squat. There is no such thing as a squat because everybody is 99.9% well, .9 the same. But there are differences in hips, femur length, Strength level or that current stuff. structure, like sometimes things, those things are a moving target. Exactly. Yeah, you start and moving now. And exactly. We'll get you and there so eventually. you need to yeah. learn to squat. You, not a squat. You squatting. And again, to become the guy who squats 500, you need to know who you are. You might be the guy, the, the guy squatting 350 now, but who is that person? If you don't find that, how are you going to find the guy who squats 500? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what it comes down to. Like that's me. That was this weekend. I was like, all right, let's let's find me as a as a pool player. No bullshit. Not better, not worse. By the way, don't don't think you're worse than you are either. Yeah, that's another big integrity problem. does not mean oh I'm not that good. No, that's it can either be false modesty, it can be lack of confidence. It, that's not integrity either. Integrity is this is who I am and where I am. Mm -hmm. Not better, not worse. I think that's a huge, a huge thing to emphasize. I notice it very rarely with male athletes, but with female <laughs> athletes a lot. So all the time. My wife, my wife, she she might see this. She's that's like her single you think? biggest thing is every time. I mean, and thing? she can lift a I lot. I know your mom is watching. I know my mom's watching, but she, but my my, my wife's extremely strong, and yeah. but, but she'll you know she'll deadlift something heavier than anyone else is doing in the gym, mm -hmm. and she'll get done, and people will be like, wow, that's pretty good, and, and she's like. Oh, it's, all, yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah. And the problem is it's not being humble. It's that she actually feels like it because she wishes it was more. Yeah, exactly. And so there's always this gap between where you think you are and that room where you, you want to be. Yeah. And also in there is where you really are. So you're yeah. always underneath something. Yeah, but so that makes really hard to shoot for the correct target. Then. Mm -hmm. So integrity goes both ways. Yeah. You just don't lie to yourself. Don't where you are. Yeah. That's the most important stuff. And I and and when we mention that too, like because it goes both ways, that has a lot with just finding out what the reality of it all is. You know, what I mean, you have to be in tune with. You can't be delusional on either direction. Either, either you way. have to do the work, but you do have to do like you do is go out and get in the mix and just see how everything. But otherwise, the, the passion dwindles off too. Mm -hmm. Like you, you lose the love for the stuff. You lose. You lose that love for yourself that you have playing, because let's be honest, that's what it is. You love yourself. You, know, you love to yeah. watch your, to feel yourself playing and or lifting weights or stuff like that. You will lose it. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand the price on that one. First of all, when you lose it, it's hard to get back. But without it, you can't be strong. You can't be good at anything. Like what we all discovered that. Like the second you start hating yourself, it works for a year, maybe two, and then you're down. And then you break, and then you quit. and. It's no different than the sandbag carry, right? Like yep. if every day at the end of the session you're supposed to carry your sandbag for 400 meters, that first time you say, ah, oh, I'm going to skip it today, yep. is the last yeah. time you'll do it. Mm -hmm. So life is no different. If every time something gets hard and you're like, ah, oh, well, it's just a hobby, I'll find another one, yep. you're going to quit yep. like 20 different hobbies and never be good at anything. The problem wasn't the hobby. The problem was you. You just mm -hmm. didn't learn. You don't know how to learn. Right? And the problem is you don't know how to learn that thing. So you learn to learn that thing, and then there's the next one, and the next one, and the next one. But right now, I don't know how, I'm learning how to learn pool. And thank God I have a coach. Cause, and by the way, he told me all this. He told me exactly what I need to do. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Look, listen, I know myself. I'm, I'm the victor of all things. Look, I, I know my nervous <laughs> system, OK? Uh, this is you know you're talking to. You don't know this fucking stuff, Are you dude, talking to go. me? <laughs> um, uh, and I'm there at the competition going like, yeah, I know what I'm working on tomorrow. That's a flaw too. Oh, I'll work at it in practice. No, 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 no. Today. Now, be mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. That's usually me where like, I'll work on it next week. No. During the tournament, I was like, no, 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 no. Right now. You're going to fix it on the next ball. 
And the next one, fail again, shit, next ball, next yeah. ball. I, ref I did not let myself quit that mentality of, no, the next ball is when I run the table up. Because what better time to actually apply that than in the situation that's it identical to the It is the only the time, one it is the only right? time you get to apply it, yeah. the only time. Because what you wanted to do is, you, it, sub subconsciously, you wanted to leave that room and go learn to swim on a table because the water's no, fucking no. cold. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was at Plumby. Yeah. That in Amsterdam, I fucking left that room in my mind so fast. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it next. No, not in yeah. your mind. Literally, we literally left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but I had to process what what yeah. happened. So, because I, I also know myself, I was like, no, no, I want to learn this correctly. I told her, like, I want to learn this correctly now. I'm not gonna shy away from it, but I, there's only so much I can take in in because I was really flustered in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Like that one, as nervous as I was, and my hands have never been that. Mm -hmm. Greasy, whatever the fuck it was, I've never felt that. So my stick was disgusting. I had to <laughs> clean it, and I'm not a I'm not a drum, but he was like, Ugh. <laughs> so. Uh, and again, my, my hands were like this. And like I don't remember the last time I was that nervous, but I was like, but I'm staying in it. Yeah. I bathed in it for fucking eight hours straight. Didn't eat all day. I was that sympathetic. Didn't eat all day. I had nothing all day. I was like, I, I'm playing to my best. It was my best that day. It wasn't good. At all, God knows I'm a lot better than that. But by the way, three days later, I'm still recovering. Like my game is still not where I would like it to be. I realize how tight I get, how how all my practice did shit for the day. I am not practicing correctly. I need to find myself, my game. Yeah. That that was a, such an important lesson. So that's why at the end, at, we when we have dinner, I'm like, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a bit tired, obviously, but I'm fine. I'm not happy, right? But we were having dreams. I was like, I'm good. I I learned so much today. Mission accomplished. So before before we wrap up, I want because I, I don't think we've tied it back into this just yet. But I want to know for you, since you've started this process with pool, um, obviously there's been a lot of change. So let's go maybe the most recent, say the last couple of months, as as it's been picking up. You've done a couple of competitions, mm -hmm. and there's and so I think you're, uh, what's the word like like elevating your desire to learn, or at least yep. it's you're getting to the point where mm -hmm. things got to yep. move fast. What now have you done that's helped? In, in, in tr how has that helped carry over into your training now too? Because I'm assuming yeah, the precise you're a different person yeah. because you're, you're you're focusing on these other. Yeah, skills. because now it's a preciseness of it, right? Pool, you have to be very precise because it's you know the cue ball is not here, mm -hmm. it's not there, it's uh, there, stuff like that. But also the the hiding that I was doing, the always relying on talent and stuff like that. So now I'm looking at my training, going like uh, again, not so instead of training, going like. Uh, picturing Ryan Shaw doing it or picturing this happening or like I can chase that guy or whatever it was a blunt statement to myself of where are you this mm -hmm. is what you can live today where do you want to go from there but so again like that I will define how good I think I am based on my accomplishments and not how my training feels I've done that too many times in my life where a training feels awesome it makes me feel like a badass good it'll make me train more but the accomplishment that I come still has, has to also be there, mm -hmm. right? So you can't base everything on outcome, but at some point you also need to test yourself. Yeah, I got very good at feeling a certain way, but never testing myself enough. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure people will find weird to hear that from me, but I have a different set of standards for myself that I had that I have for most people. Mine are very high when yeah. it comes to myself, not for others, but for me. They are very high, and I realized that I was complacent on a number of things. Mm -hmm. And that is showing me one more complacency I had toward learning, where I'm like, this is not acceptable. So uh, it's not so much outcome-based, because I don't care about winning the tournament. I care about me being able to play under pressure, because that says something about me. Right? That The person who can play under pressure, that is the person I want to become. That's the outcome. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so the outcome is based on how you feel. Yeah. Under Always. pressure and in control, right? Yeah. Because exactly. Julian under pressure is usually like guns blazing, yeah. kill mm -hmm. everyone. That's not the same. Yeah. Flow under pressure. Mm -hmm. I want to become a person, fin, me, I want to person Julian. I want to become Julian who can be in flow under pressure, not in fight under pressure. I can do that all day. I want to be in flow under pressure. And right now I'm incapable of doing that. I want to learn that skill. So that's what I mean by outcome. I mean, I want to become that person. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, outcome-based, but not based on the, that 
I want that tournament or this. That's not the point. Right? Yeah. The point is always about you. Mm -hmm. Never the tournament that you won. My goal is not to win a tournament. Maybe you get lucky all day. Who the fuck knows? Maybe everybody sucks. Yeah. That's not the goal. The goal is me. I want me to to become a person that can be in flow under pressure. And uh, and then I'll just keep cranking the pressure to learn to be in flow in a in a higher stake and higher stake and higher stake situation. So I can learn to be that person. That's the outcome I'm shooting for. So it's not outcome based in that sense. Yeah. Well you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> if yep. uh, I, I mean, I would say that the real takeaway that we want is to try to find something to practice learning on. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. But challenge your learning capacity. Yes. Not just lifting weight and shit like yeah. that. Because by the way, you'll apply it to training. Once you know how to learn, you will apply that lesson to training. Because now I can see the flaws when I do assistance work and stuff like that. It's too mm -hmm. much like because I, you know, you get bored, so you start le letting your mind flow, and then you start to do stuff like I Green would be. No, 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 no just do the f well, apply be in the present. Yeah, be it's, present. It's similar to like Kayla said. Like, like there's a difference. Some people will read as a form of meditation, where they just start just kind of turning their brain off, and what yep. they're reading isn't the that thing. Or yep. some people read and absorb that, and that that's one way to also not absorb any information. Yes. Right? Also, you can read and be completely distracted by other mm -hmm. things and thoughts. That's another good way to not absorb any information. Exactly, yeah. But to really read and try to literally learn the be things present. that yeah. are on the page. Yeah. Or, or to, to go and play pool and yeah. really, really focus on the skill and what you need to do and what's mm -hmm. the best for you. And right. practice, practice, practice. Don't just pick a hobby because we told you to pick a hobby. Yeah. Find that well, pick a hobby because we told you to pick a hobby. <laughs> but don't pick any of these ones unless <laughs> but like, where are you deficient? Where yes. are you struggling in life? Julian needs to be better in flow. Found a sport that he can practice that skill. Like, just find something mm -hmm. that's going to balance you but out. Th that's where the integrity is, right? Is that is the, don't be complacent. Challenge yourself. N know where you need to be challenged. So don't challenge yourself only on the stuff you're good at. That's what I've done for so long. It's like, all right, but that. Right. I'm not if good I'm a at. good athlete, maybe don't pick another sport as my hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, and a strength-based sport. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know I mean, like, uh, come on. Um, it's not just about learning double unders, okay? Yeah. So go go do the stuff you're not good at. It, it goes back to integrity. You need that to grow as a person. But because for me, the the biggest thing is understand that is you don't get from a 400-pound squad to a 500-pound squad by staying the same person. Mm -hmm. That you have to understand that. You need to become the person who squats 500 pounds, not yeah. squat 500 pounds. Yeah, and that's and, and, the thing. And along that journey, if if you're having trouble getting from being the guy from 400 to 450, well, then maybe you need to spend some of that, some of your time, some of your resources, learning something else, so that then that's exactly the piece that's because you think, oh, I'm not strong enough. I don't understand why my training is stuck. Is because you, as a person, cannot progress. Mm -hmm. Many times, that's the issue. It's you. You can't progress as a person. Therefore, you can't get stronger. Yeah. You either haven't learned patience or discipline, or, or you didn't want to be that person. Yes. That's you you don't give a shit about a hundred pounds on your squat. Yeah. Maybe there's that too. Yeah. Or you think you do, but you don't really. Or you're not willing to put the work in. To it's okay to change your mind. Yeah, that's that a big one. Yeah, I'm yeah. not changing my mind. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but like that's to me the biggest thing is that is understand that you need to become someone who can do the things you want to do. That's the stuff. So it's not about the thing you want to do. It's about becoming that person. Mm -hmm. That to me is the biggest lesson of all is that is you'll be a better person. That's always been the reason I did the sled because yeah. he made me a better person because the person that could do that much shit that painful was better than the person I was when I woke up this morning yeah that's it become better become better become a better person well I think that's got us wrapped up for this week good so now I can go kill my daughter yeah you can uh, I'll, I'll, I'll it's take still it. ringing is it really yeah oh it's in the sandbags <laughs> yeah no I put it in a fucking t-shirt <laughs> so I wouldn't so it doesn't oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, so I'll take care. Of, I'll take care of the heavy lifting here. So Julian, you're on Instagram at StrongFit1. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be. You're gonna be able to find most of our stuff there. Kayla, will you spell yours again? O Always spell it. O O H K A Y underscore three two. That's O K underscore. Or just look up hashtag Coffee Girl, and we'll just take that over. It'll be somewhere <laughs> until somewhere. the yeah, person exactly. who has yes. the name gets yeah. rid of it. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Tyler F and Stone. Uh, StrongFit.com. That's everything from seminars, workshops. Uh, we're going to have the online nervous system workshop. We've got the training group. I think you can still get in by the time you're seeing this. 
Uh, that'll be on yeah, the group. Um, Training group, yeah, for sure. Training group, uh, yes. Uh, nutrition group will be in a few close, months yep. from this time. Yep. But uh, so if you missed new, the first or second nutrition group, there will be another yep. one in a couple months. Yeah, we'll most likely uh, either October first or February or oh, September first. Yeah, yeah, and we'll keep you in the loop. Anything on strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu for the European mm-hmm. folks. New shirts are coming. New shirts are coming. Right, the, yeah. The Have baseball I seen shirts. Shirt? Yeah, I the baseball see. shirts. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And then Strong Fit Community on Facebook. Strong Fit Community on Facebook. That's the spot. So uh, you can find us all, all of those places. And here again next week. See you.